So far I've been showing the use of envelopes in a conventional manner. Today I will uncover advanced secrets of Andromeda's envelopes in more detail. Some of these powerful envelope features may astonish you. Envelope 3 is the kind of envelope you are accustomed to using. It is only positive, meaning all values it produces are above zero. Envelope 3 is hardwired to the VCA, and for that reason it is not possible to reduce loudness below zero with negative values. Some synthesizers, like the Jupiter 6, will allow you to invert an envelope for negative modulation values. Given the destination's initial amount is at or near maximum, for example the filter cutoff, Envelope 3 can be used to subtract from the initial amount. On the Andromeda, this behavior is possible using Envelope 3 by going to the desired modulation route, for example one of the filter modulations, and setting the modulation amount negative. Set the destination to Filter 2 Resonance. A simple laser zap sound can be made this way with Filter 2 self-oscillation and defeating the main oscillators. Tweak the envelope 3 settings for a simple attack decay envelope. Add some ping pong delay and we have ourselves a simple 80s video game arcade sound. However, we don't need to feel limited to this conventional way of thinking because Andromeda has a wicked feature up its sleeve. Envelope 1 and 2 are bipolar, which means some intermediate envelope stages can drop below zero. In this way, we have a hybrid of positive and negative envelope behavior by having stages possibly in both the positive region and negative. This patch is basically a wah-wah envelope contour on a bass note. Make a simple doo-wah bass by starting with the default patch, setting one of the oscillators pitched down one octave, and set the envelope 2 decay level to some negative value, and change the time settings to preference. Kick on the unison for more delight. You have been shown the time page and level page must be used in conjunction with each other to shape the envelopes. If you want to change the shape of a stage without changing its values, use the time soft button to advance to the next stage. On the level page, level sets the amount of change the envelope will provide. Offset simply produces fine adjustment of the level amount. Polarity will establish whether the envelope is normal or inverted. Using our doo base patch, change envelope 2 polarity to negative. It got pretty quiet, didn't it? Because it's taking an already low cutoff frequency and trying to subtract from it. So raise the filter 1 cutoff and you'll hear the inverted envelope contour effect on the sound. Playing keys from the keyboard is the most common way of triggering the envelopes on a synthesizer. On Andromeda, it is possible to use alternate triggering modes to trigger the envelopes from many other kinds of events. You can even trigger an envelope using the level of one of the other envelopes. Envelopes are, after all, modulation sources. Also, triggering can affect how the envelope stages will progress. Normal 1 triggers with key on, and successive key triggers will maintain the envelope stage wherever the previous key was held. Normal 2 is the same, but when a key is released, the release 2 stage is jumped instead of release 1. Free run will always run through all the stages, even if the key is off before reaching the sustain stage. Sustain release will merge the sustain and release 1 stages for a somewhat simplified envelope. Modulation trigger works like free run, except the envelope is triggered by a modulation source instead of the keys. Pressing keys by themselves do not produce sound. Use the source setting to establish the triggering source, like the mod wheel for example. The level setting here, say 32, will establish the threshold value at which the mod wheel triggering will take place. Notice the subsequent wheel movements do not produce a trigger until another note message is sent. Polarity will establish the conditions at which the modulation input will trigger the envelope. 
For example, positive is an intuitive way to do this as a rising modulation amount will trigger the envelope and a falling modulation will not. Supposing negative polarity is assigned, a falling modulation value will trigger the envelope and a rising value will not. Some modulations, for example, the pitch bender can have a value ranges below zero. In this case, more polarity settings called ABS or absolute are available, which treat all values as if they were positive values. For instance, it will treat a value of minus 63 the same as if it were positive 63. Modulation trigger gate is similar to normal one, except the envelope is triggered by a modulation input. The modulation input is switched off before the sustain level is reached, then the envelope will jump to the release one stage. The retrigger page will determine how the envelope responds to retriggered input data. Use the soft knob to access the retrigger settings. Notice that the retrigger is basically the same as the trigger page, except the addition of the stage parameter. Don't be confused by this. The retrigger page settings are independent of the trigger settings. The stage parameter simply selects where in the envelope to restart during a retrigger event. So let's put the retrigger to use. This patch is inspired by an old Korg Delta I used to own. The Delta's entire note range shared a single envelope, such that new notes would retrigger everything, including any notes that were already held down. Starting with the default patch, set both oscillators to square. Set oscillator 2 pitch down 1 octave. Bring in a small amount of sub oscillator 1 and 2 and introduce some ring mod as well. We'll take advantage of filter 1 bandpass and filter 2, so turn those levels up. Filter 1 will have low cutoff, moderate resonance, and envelope 2 amount of 65. Filter 2 will also have low cutoff, resonance somewhere below self oscillation, and envelope 2 amount of 25. All the magic happens in the envelope 2 settings. The envelope 2 contours need to be a simple attack decay, so make the decay 2 and sustain 0. On the retrigger page, set the source to program key trigger. This will generate a new trigger whenever any note is played. Set the retrigger level to around 2 and enable the retrigger. Now hold chords with the right hand and play bass notes with the left. The dynamics page has parameters that control the envelope behaviors during performance. These parameters have everything to do with how you are playing. Sometimes you will play short notes. That's called staccato. Playing long notes that bleed together is called legato. Playing notes hard or soft is known as key velocity and has to do with how fast the key is struck. The reset parameter determines what the envelope will do when new notes are played. Normal will always reset the envelope from the beginning. Legato will always maintain the current envelope stage wherever it may be. Reassign is the same as legato, but it has to do with using mix mode, which is something I won't go into right now. Analog will restart the envelope attack stage at the present level from previous notes. Sustain pedal will enable the held note at a sustain level, provided the pedal is plugged into the synth and is being held down. Key tracking will add or subtract decay and release time depending on where the keyboard range notes are being played and if this parameter has a positive or negative setting. Positive settings will increase the envelope time for higher notes. Negative settings will decrease the envelope time. The attack and release settings are not affected by this parameter. Key tracking bass sets the midpoint of the relationship in a positive or negative direction. Notes at or near the key tracking base generally produce no effect on the envelopes. Similar to key tracking, the level tracking can alter the envelope level in relation to what key is played. Velocity modulation will measure how hard or soft the notes are playing and alter the level of the envelope. Release modulation is similar to key tracking, except it can modify the release time in relation to which notes are playing.
Loop mode settings are simply an amazing feature. In this way, the envelope can behave more like an LFO. You have full envelope control when the loop will start, which stage it will start, and how it will continue to the end. When messing with the loop parameters, the display will change to reflect your settings. Count sets the amount of times the loop will occur, or sustain will continuously loop until the key is let off, or an infinite loop. The loop type can be forward, backward, or rock and roll for both forward and backward. As the envelope is looped, the start and end stage may be at different levels. So the smooth parameter can resolve this. You can even set the shape of the smoothing with the S-shape parameter. Starting with the default patch, set both oscillator waveforms to square, saw, and triangle. Set oscillator 1 pitch down 1 octave. Once again, all the magic happens in the envelope 2 settings. Set the loop type to reverse. The shape linear and the count set to sustain so the loop will keep going as long as the key is held down. Remember, the speed of your loop has everything to do with the envelope time settings, especially the decay one stage time setting. So if you want the loop to roll on faster, shorten the decay one time. Notice that cutting the decay one time short enough can cause the loop to generate its own oscillation characteristic. If you like the way that sounds, assign a modulation root, like the mod wheel, to shorten the decay one time. Lastly, I wanted to introduce the process module located under the LFO modules, which gives access to the engine optimizer. Settings here are saved per program. The engine optimizer is used to improve how your patch responds to envelope, filter, and pitch. For example, if you have a Moog based patch, introduce a little more punch by setting the filter optimizer for fast percussion. Most of the time, the normal setting should do just fine for most occasions. I have shown much more about Andromeda's envelopes than maybe you care to know, but hopefully you have also been exposed to some features that blow your mind with endless possibilities. My next video will explore the clock and its related functions, LFOs, arpeggiator, and sequencer. Thanks for watching.